In this video, we install a limited slip differential, we beef up our transmission supports, and we take care of that rear main seal oil leak. Let's go. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new, I'm Matt. Let's go ahead and while we're waiting on some parts, we'll clean this transmission up. We'll toss it in our LSD and toss some new seals in it. Before we do that, we need to remove this throw out bearing, slave cylinder. It's just kind of all in one thing. Let's go ahead and, and remove this dude. <laughs> oh. oh, we're tightening it. Wrong way. There we go. Damn thing. Right, there. Start doing it with one hand. Pull this all the way out. Keep that out. There we go. Then we need to remove this thing without breaking it. There's a couple little clips here. Not a couple, there's three. So there's three of them here that will just let this thing go out. I'm gonna set the camera down so I can get this out. There we go. Just took a couple hands to remove the thing. Oh, perfect. Anyhow, this is brand new, so we'll toss this aside. Hey, I'll we'll toss this bitch up on here. So we can clean it. We'll get it degreased. <laughs> we'll hit her with a little bit of into the grizer. Try and keep it away from our seals and sensors, all that crap. We'll let that set for a moment and then we're gonna hit with the power washer. She's a dirty girl. Let's go ahead and hit her with the power washer. Jeez. I think that's about as clean as she's going to get. Let's go ahead and get rid of all that water. Let's go. What are you doing, Apollo? It's not even ready to go. The transmission's still out of the car. You're just gonna have to wait, buddy. Our transmission is nice and clean. These are very simple as far as where the differential is. Luckily, we don't have to split the case in order to get this out, because it's just right here. We got a couple bolts that hold in the seal, that hold in this housing as well, and then we just have some bolts around it. So let's tear into it. There we go. There's our seal. <clears throat> now, if you're doing this under the car, obviously you'd have to pull the axles. Not much to this thing. We'll have to go back and clean this up. Everything's looking pretty good. We'll give her a little bit of a clean. And then here is our diff. Oops. <laughs> There's our race and we got ourselves a little bit of a shim. We'll just set this aside for now. So what you wanna look for are signs of wear. And uh, I mean, these things look pretty darn good. They look nothing super crazy going on with the, the gears in here. Could use just a little bit of cleaning. Got ourselves a, a good transmission here. So we'll give this a little bit of a cleaning. I'll just wipe it down with some paper towels. This little piece that came out is a magnet just to catch metal debris and she's not too bad. I mean, you're gonna get a little bit of metallic wear, but overall, pretty good health, I'd say. Okay, let's remove our ring gear. We got this thing flipped over. Hopefully this isn't too much of a pain in the neck, torque-wise. So here's our open diff. Our pin's kind of ready to fall out. She's still in good shape. Not a whole lot of wear there, but she is a little, a little rinky dinky. Might be up to the task, but let's upgrade it. We got our parts cleaned up. I just use a little bit of brake cleaner to clean the differential housing up. She's nice and clean. 
cleaned up our ring gear as well. And then we cleaned up our bolts to bolt our ring gear to yeah, the new limited slip. So let's test fit this guy, see if it's gonna slide over. We might need to heat the ring gear up so it'll drop over it. There we go, here's our new limited slip. Let's see if we can't drop this thing over it. It's only gonna go on one way. You can't bolt things up here. She just drops right on down. All right, I think I'm gonna heat this up a little bit so it will drop right on down. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, let's heat her on up. See if we can get it drop down now. I guess it would help if I lined it up correctly. Ah, she's not even that damn hot. There we go. I don't have any torque specs for these bolts, so I do know it had some uh, Loctite on it. We'll put a little red Loctite on it. Make sure these things don't back out. And we'll chug them on down. If I had to guess torque-wise, I'd say in the 30 range. All right, I think we're good. Woo! It's another day. We got our reluctor ring in. I don't know why I want to say wing, but it's a reluctor ring. So let's go ahead and install these. We'll fix that link for good. And we got some other little goodies that we're, we're upgrading. All right, so these instructions are a little... <laughs> <laughs> they don't make sense with how the parts are provided, and I'll show you why. All right, so here is our seal that's mounted to the crankshaft position sensor. I don't know, I'm not sure if this is a housing or if there's anything really magical going on with inside this ring, but the instructions say that, I mean, these are, they treat as two separate pieces. You install your, your seal, and maybe this is just for ease of installation. So the seals are supposed to go in first, then this reluctor ring, and then this housing that holds the crankshaft position sensor, or if this is the sensor itself, eh, I don't know. So we're gonna do this again, very similar to how we did. Initially, I, I did cut it out the video, but I installed it backwards and was trying to push this back in because normally from my experience with v8s the lip is on the inside and there's pressure that's applied to it to keep the oil from coming out but in this one the lip is actually on the outside and it's just kind of squishing down so we'll install this the correct way to begin with we'll put this on we'll make sure everything's nice and degreased we got some brake clean so let's get after this. Okay, let's take our brake cleaner and we're just going to clean the back of the block up, the oil pan, around the ceiling surface and all that fun stuff. I don't want too much of that going into the oil pan, but I want to make sure it's clean. We are still doing a 500 mile oil change after driving this thing 500 miles. And then we'll, we'll rug on it. And my main concern is just getting this nice and clean right here. So when we put our new seal in, it's gonna do its job. Got rid of all that excess oil. I mean, she looks pretty dang clean. Daniel says to use some Dexos oil. This is what I've been using. My old man was just adamant about pins oil and how well it worked. He's been a mechanic for 25 years, so I trust him. He's retired. Let's get after putting a little bit of oil around this seal and we'll install it, we'll drive it in. We're just gonna use a wooden block and a hammer and to make sure it's completely seated, we'll use this guy to help seat it all the way. Hopefully that takes care of our issue. Little bit of that deck. Oh, that's so dirty. All right, screw that. <laughs> looking at the camera, <laughs> making sure it was in frame. Hey, whatever. All right, we're just gonna put want to lube her up well make sure there's no dry start issues we'll keep the outside nice and clean wipe up any excess bs all right let's toss her in let's do it to it see how far we can push this thing in by hand we'll try and holy crap i just slid right in nice now we'll take this old position sensor brain doobla dauber and we'll take this block of wood and our good old trusty five pounder and we'll drive her on home. Oh, jeez. Yeah, it's not gonna be easy. Damn it, what the hell over there? Oh, 
Almost there, almost flush. Okay, everything's nice and seated. Let's go ahead and toss this reluctor ring in. As I said before, it looks like it's got a little more wear here. I don't know if that, it's probably a 180 degree sensor, but we'll toss that in. Now we just need to toss on our flywheel, our clutch and our pressure plate. All right, part of putting a new clutch in or just removing the bolts involves putting new bolts in it. Someone asked, do they all come in individual bags? Did you buy every single part? I don't know why. Why wouldn't you just sell them in sets of six instead of individually wrapping them? However, it is what it is. Let's install it. We've got our flywheel bolted up. We've got our clutch and our pressure plate on. If you're curious about that, check out this video here. I'll walk you through it. Now let's get after this transmission. All right, got a couple two by fours. We're just gonna knock this seal out. Rented this tool from AutoZone and we'll find one that's the size of this seal. This should work just fine. And we'll just knock this dude out. There we go, our old seal. All right, let's see if we can install our bearings without damaging them. <laughs> no promises. <laughs> so I'm gonna do is take this driver and see if we can't seat these things. Look like it's going down nice, nice and easy. Got a little piece of wood over here. And we're just gonna keep tapping on it until we hear a little bit of a change in the tone. There we go. That's how you know the thing is seated. It's nice and seated. Now we just need to toss the other one on. I'll flip this guy upside down like so, our wooden block. Just in case you're curious, I'm just using some GM OEM replacement parts. There's the part number. And we're gonna give this one the same treatment. There we go. Nice and installed. So ready to go back in the transmission. So I went to the hardware store, got a steel plumbing piece. I was hoping to find an end cap, but I did happen to find a reducer and made my own installer. Took a little bit of time. Let's see if this works. Oh, Jesus. Okay, I degreased everything again with the little carb, or excuse me, brake cleaner. Okay, yeah, that fits perfect. Let's see if we can drive this thing down in there. Perfection! Look at that. A little Southern engineering for you. So if you're doing this and following along, it's a one and a half to three quarters reducer. I just leveled the bottom of this out a little bit, opened it up, perfect installer tool. Everything's nice and clean. We're gonna take our little pickup magnet again. It's a little couple things on there, but I mean, she's clean for the most part. So we'll take our magnet and we'll toss it back in. Now we're gonna take our limited slip differential with our new bearing on with our races. We'll just drop this guy right on in. Give her a little bit of a spin on the input shaft. Make sure we got together the correct way. Everything's meshing together quite nicely. We'll take our shim, this thing goes here, and that just basically takes up all the play. Make sure, you know, make sure that the, the teeth of the gears are meshing together properly. And we'll take our cap that we just put a new seal into. And we'll take a couple of our bolts. And this is just to kind of keep things from falling apart. All right, on this side over here, I mean, we could put the, the cap on and then install this, but I think it will be a lot less of a headache. We just seat this thing in there now, and then we'll let the cap do the work. So we got a couple dowels here, diagonal from each other. Here's our two carrier bolt holes. Before we toss this on, we need to put a little sealer on it. Toss a little gray RTV around the perimeter of this thing.
We've got a little seal around there. We'll put our axle seal back in. All right, I'm just gonna double check everything. We've got our races in there. We've got our shim. We've got our end cap seal over here, along with our axle seal in there. So we'll just go ahead and toss this on. And I'm gonna take my four big bolts here, and we're just gonna snug it down by hand, and we'll let this sealer sit up for about an hour, and then we can torque it to spec. We're gonna let this semi-harden for an hour, per the instructions. We'll come back and torque it to its final values. All right, it's been an hour. Let's go ahead and remove these bolts. We'll put some red thread locker on them, and we'll secure everything down. Okay, it calls for 80 Newton meters of torque. So let's go ahead and torque it down. Come on! All right, I'm gonna take my specialty tool and make sure this thing's properly seated. Sounds like she is. All right, looks good. Now we'll toss the rest of these in and then we'll torque them to spec. Now that we have the transmission all finished up, let me show you the added support I'm going to give to this transmission. I got these parts some time ago. You may have seen them in the background in a previous video, but check this out. Here is one of the stock flimsy plastic transmission mounts. And, wait, wrong one. <laughs> it's being replaced with this guy, which is a, a fully CNC machine transmission mount. It looks like the, the bolts not as wide. They did provide a couple bolts, which I imagine that's what these are for. I guess, maybe it's for the upper part of this. I don't know, we'll, we'll find out once we get in there. You can see just how flimsy this is. There's not a whole lot holding it together. This does, it's not a polyurethane bushing. However, it is solid and will just help keep the engine from twisting. Here's our other mount. I have yet to take it off of the support here, but it will be replacing this piece here and it'll just keep the thing from twisting. Yeah, now if only it would go together all by itself, but let's put all this stuff back inside the car. It's gonna be a lot of work. work we got the transmission in everything is hooked up now we need to take care of the subframe I'm going to clean this thing up a little bit degrease it power wash it and then we'll install the CNC transmission brackets let's go She's all power washed up. As you saw, I installed the rear transmission support thingamabobber. We'll take the subframe, we'll install it in the car, bolt our steering rack, our sway bar back up, power wash this mount that goes to the transmission. So we'll get this, what do I do with those bolts? Anyways, I'll get this <laughs> installed on the transmission and then we'll install our other mount. It is another day. We have the transmission in, everything's hooked up. The subframe is on. Now let's finish installing those reinforced transmission mounts. Here is the front transmission mount here. I got everything just kind of loosely in there. This is where this little bushing would go here. I guess it's just a space, a spacer. You can see how it hooks up to the transmission, just right to the bottom. And then here is our second mount towards the back. I got it in there nice and loose. It too has a, a couple spacers because these things are narrower. Let's see if we can squeeze these things on in there. We'll thread it in from this side. I might need two hands for this. Hold on. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna need two hands. Both of them set up. I got the spacer on this side over here. It does look like the whole transmission just needs to go up a little bit. Same difference here when I look into the threaded hole on this side, this whole thing just needs to go up. So I'm gonna take my jack and we'll just jack the 
the transmission up a little bit. Well, everything is all bolted up. Kind of hard to give you guys a real overall view here on the ground. She's in there, did take some finagling with just a, a pry bar just to get the holes line up, but not too bad overall. Okay, let's stab in our axles, dip it in a little high temp grease. This will make sure we're not running this thing in dry. From my understanding, this is some of the best stuff to go with for these M32 transmissions. Helps with that first to second grind of that, the synchros just kind of slowing the gears down. So we'll give this a whirl. Also, it's well known that these transmissions are a little underfilled from the factory. Um, mine's in great shape. However, I did do a clutch change and an oil change or, or transmission fluid change. Um, I don't know, it was maybe 60,000 miles ago. So we'll toss some of this in there. We'll put in 2.2 to 2.4 quarts is what's recommended as an overfill instead of the 1.8. So let's go ahead and toss them in. We'll see if I can't not spill any. Oh, there she goes. Woo! Okay, she's on the ground. Let's see how we did. Well, she don't want to kick over. Well, it looks like I found my problem. Lost communication with the ECM. Let's go check the connection. We did wiggle this thing around quite a bit. So I was able to bump the car over, have yet to start it, so let's go ahead and start it now. My belt's definitely chirping, but... Let's take our four spin. Doesn't look like anything's leaking. Woo! For October, it is toasty here in Houston. I, mean, I think I've gone through three shirts today. Now that she's running, she's warmed up, we'll do a little bit of tuning. Look how humid it is. Ugh, it's just hot. Okay, we're working on getting the idle all sorted out. We're just going to <laughs> go right down the, the driveway here and we'll see how she does we're logging some data see what we need to add see what we need to take away and we'll just see how things are running we'll actually take it further than five feet some parts are a little lean but we'll get that all sorted out it's gonna spin around the the complex here and Get our math sensor just all dialed in. We don't have any leaks, which is awesome. What do you think, Paulo? All right, we're just taking her for a spin. I probably have put a good 10 miles on the car, trying to get the, the fueling just right, but she's sounding pretty good. I could feel the LSD around the I was making a U-turn underneath the overpass. Felt it grip, that's pretty awesome. So I'm gonna drive back to the shop, just kinda went down the freeway a little bit, kinda helped tune things in. We'll give you some turbo sounds. pretty awesome the LSD is working great we'll put it to some more tests and some later videos but thanks for tuning in if you're new to the channel be sure to subscribe give this video a thumbs up let me know what you think down in the comments until next time peace out with your peace out.